In this video, traders, we're gonna look at if 85% of traders lose, what's the separator to be in that top 15? Stick around. Hey guys, warm welcome to your, I'm gonna beat around the bush, you see us all the time, you see at the end of our videos, disclaimers we have to put on, you see our kind of brokers and stuff, you see it banded around, the number ranges from 70% to 95%, who knows? Anyway, the point is, and I've taken the kind of average of those, um, if most traders by a significant margin lose money, what's the separator? The first thing is before I go into these guys, I wanna tell you that this number always looks way worse than it is. And I've talked about this before and I'm briefly talking about it now. If you think about the people who come into trading, you have got a big chunk of people who just come in expecting to get rich very, very quickly, think it's easy money, then you can put a small amount of money in, make a lot of money, and that's the end of the game. And that's a big chunk of people. And that's gonna take up a decent chunk of that percentage. And you're not in that category because you're spending your valuable time watching videos and from people that you think hopefully might give you a little bit of extra knowledge or a kind of spark a bit of interest in you to improve your trading. That's the only reason you're watching these videos, guys. And the only reason you're reading the books is because you want to become a better trader. You think, hey, you know what? Maybe I can get a few little bits from that, a few little nuggets that I can implement in my trading and move forward. And that's good. And that immediately sets you apart from those guys who are coming in and just punting away, hoping to get rich in the next week or so. So immediately that number is way, looks way worse than it is. So you are on the right side already just by taking the time to learn and to kind of improve your own trading, to listen to other people's opinions, etc. Even if you kind of one of these people listens to me and goes, I'm gonna do everything, uh, the, the, everything that I'm gonna do, nothing that guy just says, I'm gonna do everything against what that guy says. Whatever the, the case may be, hopefully that's not the case, but whatever the case may be, you are spending some time to improve your trading. Anyway, what's the separator? This is what I see from what's helped me move the needle more. When I focused on these things, I've noticed a huge improvement over my almost 20 years now, a couple of months ago, but 20 years uh, since I placed my first trade, um, interestingly enough. And also, you know, what really is a separate from the people who kind of start out for a little bit, do it for a while and kind of drift off, or people who are really focused and you just see them getting better and better and they're putting bigger numbers up, better numbers, the consistency, you see the way that they improve and you're like, look at that, look at that, you can just see, because like I'm observing it, I can see it from the, from the, can just see and go, I can see exactly how you've improved. And these are the things, guys. Number one is work ethic. The winning traders, the successful traders, have a work ethic that is exceeding anyone else. They are putting the hours in. That doesn't mean the trading hours. That means the research hours. That means the self-improvement hours, even the health. The work ethic and the standards are high. You know, they expect to be a good trader. They expect to do well out of trading. They have high standards for how they're going to conduct themselves in front of the screens, what trades they're going to take, how they're gonna do the checklists, all this stuff. They've got a really good, strong journal. They're very good at analyzing themselves. They're spending the time doing this. The work ethic is, is high. And when you do start pushing and pushing and improving that work ethic, you start to see gains. And the funny thing is, guys, is that like with a lot of things in life, it's almost not immediate. You almost have a delay of kind of 10 to 30 days of when you start to see the benefits from it, which is why most people kind of struggle with it. They do it, they do it, they do it. I'm not seeing any results with it. I thought the journaling would help me out. I thought that having a checklist would help me out. And it's not until you've done it for a consistent amount of time that starts to filter through and help you. So work ethic and standards uh, as a trader are big, big, big separators. Number three, recovery from drawdown. I've mentioned this before, talking about recovery from drawdown, but this is, guys, the biggest separator, one of the biggest separators. You know, drawdown often is, that's it. It's the final nail in the coffin for many traders. They draw down, they give up, they kind of shrug their shoulders and go, oh, and they just trade away with no strategy, no approach, any size, and feel like, oh, I've lost all my, half my money already, I may as well lose it all. And it's that uh, conceding defeat kind of approach. But the winners, the successful ones that I've observed and the way that I approach my trading as well is ones who grit. They go, you know what, I'm drawing down. It doesn't mean I have to just give up on it. I can recover this. It might take me a long time. I may have made some brutal mistakes. I may have traded on tilt, I may have done all these things, but I'm gonna recover. And I'm gonna learn from that. And it's gonna be such a learning experience. I'm gonna take that for the rest of my trading career. So that's a separator point. Number four, 
habits and routines. I kind of touched on this with work ethic, but the habits and routines will push you through the challenges in trading. When you're going through a losing streak, when things aren't working, the fact that you get up at the same time, you do the same thing, you run through your checklist, your journaling, whatever your habits and routines are, that will get you through the times when trading isn't going so well. And that will push you through back to better times. And when you're in better times, that'll help you maximize those returns. So when you are in tune with the market, when you do have the edge, that'll help you really put the numbers on the board and really boost that PL for you. Number five, focus on one thing. Traders who are focused on multiple different markets in multiple different uh, arenas, different setups, uh, different strategy, different time frames, never win. I, ne I don't see anyone who has long-term success who trades everything at once. Now, it's not to say they might not move from one thing methodically to the next, depending on where the volatility or the price action is that suits them, but they're focusing on one thing at a time, or a few things, maybe a few things, but one thing. They might be trading cable, they might be trading the opening the opening uh, kind of movements of the indices. They might be trading swing trading momentum stocks. Might be sh looking for um, shorts on stocks that are over. You know, there's always something they're focused on because listen, guys, this is a competitive arena. We're trading against the very very best in the world. You know, we can't do this half-heartedly and expect to win. It's naive. Um, it's it, it's almost stupid to think that. You know, we have to be able to be very very good at our craft and that. For us as retail traders is to narrow it down and focus, become very, very good at that one, one thing. And you know, this kind of segues in nicely to number six, which is a unique edge or a twist on a broad approach. You look at, for my example, my unique edge, is it unique? Maybe not, but it's a twist on a broad approach, is to be very, very, very aware and understanding of specific price action patterns. You know, I have built that over time. And guys, you know, I'm not standing and saying this is exactly the way you should trade. Of course not. People have got have not have no understanding of price action, have a completely different strategy and doing very, very well. But for me, it's something that worked well for me. It's something that I, I'm good at. It's something that I know that if I implement correctly, will move me forward and move me forward and forward to my five year, 10 year, whatever goals I'm looking at. I, I, and I may adjust and I will adjust and I will adapt. But I have that, that's how I read the markets, understanding of how price in relation to levels, in relation to catalysts like earnings, how it's moving in relation to other markets. That's what I've got to feel for, that's where I focus, that's my edge. I don't stray into other arenas because uh, I know that I'm good at that. Does it mean that my equity curve goes straight up in a line? No, of course it doesn't. But I know that over time it will. I know I'll have some drawdowns, I know I'll have some stagnation, but I know that focusing on that one thing that's my edge, that works for me is going to have the biggest, biggest gain for me. And so I focus on that. And that might be different for you. It might be something completely different. I'm not saying stand up here saying, you've got to trade my way or no way. I'm not one of those traders, guys. You should know that by now if you've been around a while. You know, I think there's been plenty of ways to trade. But whichever way you decide to trade, you know, just pick it and stick with it and go, you know what? I'm going to become very good at that. I'm going to become very, very good at trading just these gold miners. I'm going to be very, very good at trading this ETF. I'm going to be very, very good at swing trading this. Very good at trading kind of iron condors across uh, the broad market. Very, very good at trading earnings condors. Whatever it may be, you get the idea. The point is you've got a unique edge or you've got a twist on a broad approach and you're focusing on one thing. The final thing, guys, is self-control. I don't know any successful trader out there who's not very, very disciplined in most aspects of life. Um, and it's the self-control of going, you know what, I'm not gonna take this trade. I'm not gonna FOMO into this trade. I'm not going to trade on a whim. I'm not gonna overtrade. I'm not gonna take this just because I feel like it. Self-control and discipline. And we've talked about this before, and I can always stand up and say this, and we, hopefully there's some tips and stuff from videos that I've done before, guys, to help you improve that. It's a never-ending process for many traders. We're all trying to become better traders and discipline is a good, uh, big part of that. But you know, having that self-control is definitely the separator to put you in that kind of small chunk of traders that do well. You know, that small chunk of traders at the end of the year are going, you know what, that was a good year and next year is gonna be even better. And if you can get yourself there, I think these, at least these seven, you can get these nailed down, you got a damn good chance. Take care guys, see you next one. Keep risk managed, bye-bye.